Welcome to another episode of the Turing Rabbit Holes podcast, the podcast all about math and science named after Alan Turing, the famous computer scientist and mathematician. I am your host, Gabriel Hesch. Also with me is your host, Dr. Alex Alanese. How are you doing today, Alex? I'm doing very well today. How are you? Excellent. Excellent. I'm very excited to start the new year with today's episode, which is all about predicting the future. Predi- predicting the future is nothing new to humanity, at least in the last couple of uh, millennia. Um, few, you know, there's there's books in the Bible that try to predict the future and the end times. However, I would say only in the last couple of centuries have people been trying to do it from a scientific perspective. Today, we are going to look at uh, one such individual who made a series of predictions, and we are going to grade this individual and see how close they came. What surprised me in the research for today's episode is that futurism, or rather the idea of, of predicting what's to come, is an actual business now. Can you describe the business of futurism a little bit? So folks have begun, companies have begun to hire uh, futurists who are educated people who uh, have a strong technical background, and they they actually try to predict the future so that we can vector the markets and and vector companies to to the right path. Okay. Yeah, so one example of this might be, um, I used to have an old Boy Scout leader who uh, many years ago at the turn of the century, 2002-ish, he put all of his stock in Palm Pilots, which I don't know which company owns Palm Pilots, but I think they actually... they go belly up. I don't know anybody who has a Palm Pilot I don't anymore. have a Palm Pilot. Yeah, but yet we, we all have a very similar device in our Android or Apple or other smartphones. So, uh, you know, obviously futurists don't always get things correct, but there's uh, trends. So, so that's the whole point about this is limits of long-term prediction and what might be easy to predict versus what might be hard to predict. So before we get into Ray, let's ask three questions to our audience. Sure. And, and the three questions are about which do you think is going to come first? Do you think we're going to have lunar and Martian bases first or the end of aging through medical technologies? Which is an easier to, which is easier to predict or not? Wow. How about the next question? Again, lunar and Martian bases or AI that finally surpasses human intelligence? Which one comes first? And, and which one is the easy one and which one is the hard one? And then now here's one that's a little more specialized. What comes first, the cure for Alzheimer's or the, uh, the, the brain cancer called glioblastoma multiform, which is a really tough cancer? Which, which, which one do you think comes first, the cure for Alzheimer's or that cancer? And which one is easier and which one's harder? We'll, we'll revisit that. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's that again at the end of the episode. Yeah, so that, those are the kind of questions that futurists would predict. So we're concentrating on Ray Kurzweil, right? Yes. And Ray Kurzweil is a guy who wrote a book in 1990 and then in 1999 making predictions about the 2000s, the early 2000s, up to about 2050. Mm-hmm. And so I think we have a bio right here. Yeah, so so he's not just, you know, I he, he's he's not only a creative writer. He, he is, you know, he has a lot of credentials that give him, you know, some credibility when it comes to his predictions. He was born in what, 1948? Mm-hmm. Looks like he was born in 48. Mm-hmm. Looks like he got a 1999 National Medal of Technology and Innovation from President Clinton. Mm-hmm. That's the United States' highest honor in technology. You know, so that's 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 pretty serious. And what were his accomplishments that led to that? He had done uh, working for for for, for blind folks, uh, optical character recognition, then to read back to, to blind folks, and that was some of his early inventions back when he was a young guy in the late '60s, I think. Yeah. So so first of all, he was an in, uh, an inventor before any of his uh, futurism. Right. Um, okay. He's, I think it says here he got he received he has received twenty one honorary doctorates. Oh my goodness! Okay, so he's and he's pretty three serious. Three more presidents have honored him, and uh, and again he's written these books. So we're going to look at the book first from nineteen ninety. It's called The Age of Intelligent Machines, mm-hmm. and we're going to see what it predicted for nineteen ninety nine, two thousand nine, thereabouts, mm-hmm. and then we'll revisit. Just nine years later, he he rewrote he wrote The Age of Spiritual Machines and made even more extensive predictions. So we have how much he improved between 1990 and, and his 1999 book, okay. and, and, and how, how well he did versus, I mean, what, were, what predictions were easy and what, which ones were hard? Yeah, yeah. Now, there's a, a few terminologies when it comes to futurism. One of them is transhumanism, or you know, what, what will come uh, after humanity. Will we uh, progress with um, genetic modification and turn us into, you know, people who can live in any environment or on any planet, or will we somehow merge with machines? Um, uh, and then other terminologies that one might want to search with this episode and other episodes is, are 
or like uh, the the technological singularity? How would you describe the technological singularity? So it, transhumanism is is fascinating, and I, I do believe it is a matter of time before we merge. Um, multiple technologies, biology, uh, so that we can live as superfishes on in, in Europa, you know, yes. with with uh, enhanced brains, and we'll be able to handle that environment. I don't see why that happens. Oh, that can't happen. Mm-hmm. And the basis of our minds may be uh, biological logic gates. We are now converting. Uh, we we're we're, we're creating cells with 20, 30 logic gates and or nor. Why mm-hmm. can't that go follow Moore's law and go into the billions? And and or quantum computing yeah. uh, technologies that are that can work with biology. Yeah. So that to me is, I think that is the path for any civilization eventually, unless it destroys itself. Yeah, I, I'm not going to tell you when, but okay. it's probably not going to be tomorrow. Yeah, and one other definition I've heard for the technological singularity is a point in the future where... Technology uh, uh, advances so quickly that hu- that it surpasses humanity's ability to predict it or to even understand it. So that also applies to you know uh, super so artificial super intelligence and things like that. So that's so almost scary in a way. It that may happen first before, long before we upload into fish that can survive in Europa. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Uh, one other thing worth mentioning is um, we did an episode on transhumanism on my other podcast, the Breaking Math podcast, called Humanity Two. I believe it's episode 8, 9, or 10 from season 1. And uh, in the research, I found a huge fight online in the comments section of an article on an actual Facebook page called Futurism. And the fight was between folks who thought that humanity merging with machines was our best chance to to survive or um, super advanced genetic modification. And the it was so interesting. The argument was that if we merge with machine, that is a bottleneck in terms of electronics and a single um, electromagnetic pulse could be devastating for a large population. Whereas if we fully understand how to modify our genes, we can, as you said earlier, become, you know, fish people or or learn how to modify uh, scales so that we can survive on a great variety of planets. We can modify our bone structure so that we could survive on planets with greater gravity and all kinds of things. So, so the argument that got pretty vicious was between what the uh, most advantageous adaptation for humanity I'll would I'll be. I'll tell you what the most advantageous uh, adaptation yeah. is. Yes, as soon as possible. Um, it's getting people at least to the moon and having enough people to have a genetic basis to, to, for us to be able to survive. Yes. And then Mars, possibly. Yeah. We've got to do that mm-hmm. because, uh, you know, the way we, we're behaving on Earth right now, we may need to do that. Yep. And, 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 and or we may be hit by a rock. There's still a lot of rocks out there that we haven't surveyed that come out of the, from behind the sun in orbits that we can't detect. Yep. And... That, you know, it might be a game change. Civilization ending rock. Yes, um, we so are. Yeah. We better hurry up. Yeah, we are currently, we have all of our eggs in one basket called the Earth. So I think a certainly. The small a, blue dot or the small, <laughs> the pale blue dot by Carl Sagan. That's yes. a good thing to watch. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, all right, without further ado, let's take a look at some of the futurism predictions of a Mr. And I'm sorry, how do you say his name? Uh, Ray Kurzweil. Ray Kurzweil. So he said by in 1990, he said by 1999, you're going to sit down and use your home computer to, to, to dress yourself, uh, mm-hmm. kind of customize your clothes and get it. Yeah. By 1999, you said, I, I'm inclined to give, to give him somewhat of a pass because what he doesn't uh, mention here at all is, is what is, is done, you know, or sorry, how, how, how widely uh, popular are these technologies in 19 or by 1999, it was possible but it was not widely uh done there were games where you could you know dress dolls and and things like that so so i don't know whether to give him a pass on this one or not i don't want to spend a whole lot so, of time so arguing. what I, I wrote myself some comments here yes my my daughter my wife are exploring something called stitch fix in which okay. you do a, an online quiz and humans dress you okay they 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 experiment with you and you go you go through feedback they send you clothes they go do you like it not and you can send it back if you don't yes and and it's a remarkably it's remarkable how fast it's tuned into the, the their sense of mm-hmm. style um in addition to that in 2020 amazon did begin uh an AI technology where you can dress yourself. So that we had to wait till 2020. Okay. So error, you know, 
20 years 21 years but you know again we give them some flex okay okay so that's that that that's kind of cool this brings up a great question with these predictions uh we should also answer the question what could nobody have predicted in terms of technology so we'll we'll get there as well we'll get there that's a good question yeah so then we go what did he predict by the early 2000s from his 1990 book uh he said uh telephones would be able to translate between language pairs Mm -hmm. uh Around 2012, I noticed that Google Translate would do a very good job between some of the more uh, main languages on Earth. Right now, in 2021, I think it's essentially all language pairs now can be done uh, real time with with your with your telephone, which is pretty impressive. So again, a few decades off. Not only you know translate well. I mean, um, I, I I've seen apps where you hold your phone over something in German and it will display it on your phone Absolutely. in English. We con- constantly do that with uh, Asian products from our local Asian store. Yes. Oh, that's awesome. That's incredible. Yes. Um, he said exoskeletal robots will be able to help uh, paraplegics walk. This is again 1990. Okay. And so I was able to find a uh, article on CNBC, mm-hmm. and it. I think you can see right here, Gabriel, Mm -hmm. what some of the more major developments were. Um, Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, major developments in the field of wearable robots or exoskeletons, sort of like Iron Man, I suppose. Uh, They're giving people hope with spinal cord injuries. So what's interesting is the next bullet. Okay. So here's the companies. Okay, okay. Now, the robots, such as the names of the uh, robots are Rewalks, Exosuit, or Exobionics, XONR. I'm sorry, what is NR? next something <laughs> and um, cyberdyne wait 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 cyberdyne, cyberdyne you got it <laughs> there's an actual cyberdyne <laughs> didn't they watch terminator oh, oh my gosh go. cyberdyne's okay. hybrid assisted limbs can help even the most sedentary of all patients so you mean uh does this also extend to those who have quadriplegia it? It, it it does and and it's it's still elementary it's mm-hmm. it still grabs you and just kind of tele and transports you mechanically brutal brutally okay. Okay. but the market's begun and you know yeah and i gotta say seeing what they've done with boston dynamics which is not only a combination of hardware but scary good software mm-hmm. i'm sure it's you know not not too long before no, the uh, market's definitely here, and 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 if you that report is if you see how many people are becoming paraplegic or quadriplegic just by accident, it's quite a lot of people. So, yeah. unfortunately, from a market point of view, there's a business there. Yes, yes, and yeah, so, yeah, absolutely. So basically, he was correct in predicting it, but in terms of how widespread it was, he was off by about thirty years. So I would say that all these are still in the realm of easy predictions. Mm-hmm. Uh, that he was only off by a few decades. Uh, yeah. Medical records, he said. Everyone would have universal medical records. No. Mm-hmm. And I think he said also we would have uh, AI butlers by, by 2009. Okay. AI butlers. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. 2009. I don't know. I mean, the, the earliest, most rudimentary, widespread AI. I don't want to Was it Siri or was it one of Siri's competitors? I think I Siri don't... was the first in 2011, maybe. Yes. And it was it developed independently and then it was purchased by Apple. I'm aware of that. And it came out, right. I think it was the main feature with the iPhone 5, I believe. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So so Siri is some degree of a butler, but not not in terms of like uh, like in the Jetsons. You know how they no. had a... No, not quite. Was it Rosie, I believe? Rosie the... Butler, I guess she was the, robot, the maid. The maid, <laughs> yeah. So I'm like, yeah, we're nowhere quite there yet. So I mean, we have a Roomba that's getting there, but you know, I I don't know. Uh, so we're gonna give him a uh, semi pass on this one. Self driving cars. What did he predict for for 2009? Oh goodness. Okay. Right there, you have it right there. Okay. So he said 2009. Is that what he said? Yeah. Cybernetic chauffeurs. Okay. Okay. They can drive humans and can be uh, retrofitted into existing cars. That doesn't exist at all. There's, there's no retrofitting into ex- existing cars. That would be impressive, wouldn't it? There are some folks doing that, but you have to have a car from a certain year onwards. Got it. Okay. okay. So where are we with Tesla? Yeah, Tesla. Now, Tesla's the, full automated driving is, they keep teasing it, you know, but I, I Well, I it came think, out in 16, right? And they call it autopilot. Yes. Yeah, well, it was very limited and it's still limited. Like you can purchase uh, the license for... Um, Oh gosh, it's it's what is it? They're they're autopilot. It, it's not quite. It's it, it's considered um, assisted. It's like an assisted cruise control. You know, if you if you read the hype, they say this is true. Drive it, in twenty one. This thing will be able to drive you around without your input. Okay. Okay. So that should be. This I, year. I I still think they're in the hype phase. And now, now Ray Kurzweil predicted that it would 
that this kind of chauffeuring of uh, autopilot would would happen with cars talking to each other and with the road talking to the cars and the, the street lights would be smart. We're nowhere near that infrastructure. Yes. I agree that that is part of the, the solution, uh-huh. but uh, we're nowhere near that. Right yeah. now, it's all in the car. The car has full responsibility to, yeah. if it's going to be an autopilot. For sure, for sure. Hmm. Yeah, that's that's interesting. And I think even in that in those autopilot cars, I don't know that there's any communication between cars. That I would be amazing, wouldn't that's, it? That, that would be the next step, right? Yeah, yeah. Just for the car ahead of you to tell you, hey, I'm about to stop because something ran in front of me. Okay, yes. Yeah. So there was an error. So we, we have no retrofitting and we're 26 years late. Is that how you read that? I, I, yeah, I'll read that. And then I, I, I copied the uh, accident statistics. Okay, so between January 2016, I'm sorry, between 2016 and January 2020, we've had 13 crashes. Now, is that, does that have to be January 2021, or is that a year? January 2020, okay. so a year ago. 13 crashes with, with the autopilot, autopilot, and that's with yeah. Tesla, only yeah. Tesla, is that yes, right? right? Okay, so that's one accident or crash-like event for every 3.34 million miles driven in which drivers had all op- autopilot engaged. And for those driving without autopilot, but with our active safety features, we registered one accident or crash like uh, event every 1.92 million miles driven. Okay. So it shows that... Uh, Safer with it on, apparently. Yeah. Yeah. They still have crash like events. But I, I'm very impressed with these numbers, to yeah. tell you the truth. I mean, if you look at early jets, yeah, the British Comet, mm-hmm. it was a killer. Oh, wow. Because okay. it would take off and the metals would expand it would land the metals would contract and one day it just ripped and wow. look at look at airline statistics in the in the beginning of jet age travel yeah this is not bad mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so okay pass yeah. on on teslas I, I definitely would love a tesla okay. one day now let's see what uh some of the things that he predicted for the early 21st century he said now with uh, classrooms the classroom would be dominated by computers mm-hmm. this was a, a fun one because because of COVID-19, we have a vast amount of students who are learning, you know, with a majority by computer. So do we give them a pass or a fail on this so, one? So think about it. Around the globe, we sent our kids home. Yes. And here in the States, it turned out that there was a huge disparity in access to the internet. Mm-hmm. So it, the classrooms dominate by computers. On the one hand, if you're a have, yes, mm-hmm. you went to online schooling. If you're yes. a have not... Yeah. You're in trouble. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, so I don't know. This is a tough one. Yeah, yeah. Huge disparity between the haves and the have-nots. Yeah. Um, so. so the next one is drug design. And I, I, I was doing a postdoc in drug design mm-hmm. in, in molecular dynamics and folding of proteins uh, back in 2000 when I went off to be a, a work on a trading floor. Yes, okay. <laughs> Instead, make a little more coin. Um, and so let's look at the successes we've had throughout see there's some successes between 2004 2007 uh i'm I'm reading here that uh merck pharmaceutical used data to make hiv integrase inhibitors uh that were approved in 2007 by intel by computational methods and then there was i found a citation saying that by 2015 roughly half of the clinical trials uh, benefited very heavily from in silico computation, which is instead of in, in, in vivo, which is inside a living tissue, instead of in, in, in vitro, which is your test tubes, in silico, half of stuff, half of st- drugs were, were being designed uh, or assisted by computer methods. Okay. Now, what's interesting on this as well is uh, with respect to automated, or I shouldn't say automated, but um, designed by computer, that's a huge thing. Um, bionic eyes. Mm-hmm. Uh, he predicted that we would have uh, technologies to allow the blind to read and to walk around the world by 1999. By 99, yep. I, he's a little, little bit off, but perhaps not too much. So state of the art today, mm-hmm. 2020, and, and we've had bionic eyes, I would say roughly 10 to 15 years, and they're 60 pixels, and you implant them in the retina. Okay. Uh, and, the, and the people who get these, they work fairly nicely. You see edge detection, so I'd be able to see you as pixel edges mm-hmm. or walk around. They can walk around. Can they read only if you put gigantic one letter at a time okay. in pixels or maybe two or three letters max? Mm-hmm. So it, 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 the technology is here. It's still in its infancy. Uh, alternatives are actual genetic cures as wow. opposed to implantation of, of bionics. Okay. I was reading somewhere that we uh, there's a technology that might allow for... Uh, 
three or four times better than what we can see in, wow. in uh, bionic eyes. So, so that's for the, the future, right? Okay. And, and uh, I can see it in a science fiction movie where you have zoom and scan and oh, yeah, <laughs> all yeah. sorts of interesting technologies. Wow. Yeah, absolutely. That's, that's, that's pretty wild. That is pretty wild. So, so he, was, he was off, but not off by too much. Yeah, and, and if, let, let, let's let's get through. Let's skip to twenty twenty, and, and let's go to what did he predict by by twenty ten? He sure. said PCs, right? Okay. So yeah, a lot of now I know that we know that from Moore's law that PCs uh, get more powerful uh, at, at a very 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 quick rate, and he had some specific predictions with respect to by two thousand ten, which is now eleven years ago. Mm-hmm. So he said that by two thousand ten, PCs are capable of answering queries by accessing information wirelessly via the internet. Um, well, I mean... I, it probably was there. It's amazing how quickly we forget, but I've yeah. been using Hey Google for a few years now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, we definitely have it now. You know, anybody who's got a Google Home, which is, or a Google Home or any of its competitors, Alexa or... So my son or, will sit next to me and I'll say, hey, yeah. Google, turn on my living room TV. Hey, Google, I want to see YouTube on Fermat or yeah. American Civil War. Or, mm-hmm. And it pops it up. So it's pretty cool. I think we're definitely there in 2020. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And, that, you know, I think that there's been around at least, from, you know, late 2016, 2017 or so. I'll have to uh, Google that. Not too bad. I, so I'm still thinking all of these are relatively easy because he did a pretty good job. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. So, so yeah. instead of calling him a genius, I'm, gonna, I'm saying that these are easy predictions. Okay. Low-hanging fruit. <laughs> In terms of futurism, that's the futurism version of you know, low-hanging fruit. So let's get to 1999, The Age of Spiritual Machines. And what did he say about 2009? What a cool name for a book, The Age of Spiritual Machines. He said this drives would go away by 2009. Okay. I'll tell you this much. If you go to Best Buy and try to buy a computer with a disk drive, a laptop, yeah. it's hard. Yes, it 21. is. It is. Yeah, I think he was off by about 10 years. So so that's, you know, nearly 100% true in 2021. He so. said telemedicine would be common, right? Yep, absolutely. Yeah, and it's, you know, again, due to COVID-19, it's more common, but I think he was still off by quite a bit, you know, by at least 21 years. Um, in 1999, everyone was, you know, or most nearly everyone was going to the doctor in person for almost everything. It was truly 2020, and mm-hmm. it was truly COVID, and I'm not sure if I like telemedicine. I've had, a, a, I think, two appointments in the last 18 months, mm. follow-ups, and you feel like you're not really making a connection. So yeah, I yeah. don't necessarily like telemedicine. Yeah, you don't really Refills, feel like... Mm. Uh, that's fine. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, if you have an ailment that troubles you, you want a little more uh, reassurance that, that they're listening to your heart or they're feeling the limb that might be hurt. Or, Correct. I yeah. don't like it. We're not so there far. yet. We are definitely, yeah, not quite there yet. So uh, supercomputers. Supercomputers have been, um, well, actually, first he had a few predictions about su- supercomputers. Um, he, he predicted um, that supercomputers have been, I'm sorry, I said that wrong. He said about, he, said he predicted 20 petaflops in, uh, I believe, 2009, and mm-hmm. we hit that mark in 11. Oh wow! Okay, that's darn close. That but that's is... easy because if you look at Moore's law, it's 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 progressing on a nice yes. La- yes. graph. Power yeah. law. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, he had a few predictions by 2019. He said we'd have self-driving cars. Ooh, he, that's better than what he called them in in his 1990 book. You know, chauffeurs, electronic chauffeurs. Correct. Which is kind of funny. Yeah. Uh, and again, Teslas. We've already we talked about Teslas. They're still controversial. Uh, and uh, I. I want a Tesla, but I don't yeah. want to be uh, in a crash. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly, exactly. So, oh, uh, I don't want to say he missed that one. He's so close. He's I close, mean, he's close. Arguably, would say he 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 got it pretty well. Mm-hmm. Now, go ahead. All students have access to computers. So, COVID nineteen showed that many kids don't have access to the internet. So that's being changed. So, from, I think in nineteen ninety 1990 and nineteen ninety nine, he predicted by now uh, by uh, twenty two thousand nine, everyone would have access. And I and I, you know. I thought that more people had access until COVID mm-hmm. showed us the truth. Correct, correct. So, yeah, not not everyone. You had most... kids uh, showing up to McDonald's for Wi-Fi. Yes, and it was you know interesting how yeah. desperate kids were to get access. Yeah, so it's not it's not quite as uh, you know not not quite everyone has it. Sort of like running water. You think everybody has it? Yeah, but uh, not everyone. So next is. Um, Simulated salespersons. I get robocalls all the time. You know, everyone is always calling me and asking me, you know, about, you know, the ex- extended warranty. We've been trying to reach you about the warranty on your car. I get that all the time. Well, the way I took it is I can dangerously, I can go, hey, Google, order me from Target, um, you know, Cokes mm-hmm. and have them delivered. Yeah. 
uh, my kids might be able to order all, something a lot more expensive and yes. have it o- ordered. So yeah. is that a simulated salesperson? We have smart speakers in, in lieu of Correct. simulated smart pers- uh, salespersons. Yes. Uh, and then he went on to, okay, I'm going to hammer on this. Household robots by by twenty th- by two thousand nine we're going to have household robots. Uh, we have Roombas and and I have good experiences and I have bad experiences, but we don't have much more than automated uh, insect like uh, vacuum cleaners. Correct. Yeah, in- I like that insect like. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Uh, and you talk about AI and the economy and and lifespan. So AI, artificial intelligence. He predicted that humans. Basically, uh, it says humans are, are beginning to have deep relationships with automated personalities, which holds some advantages over human partners. Huh. The depth of some computer personalities convinced some people that they should be more, uh, be accorded more rights. I don't think we're there at all. No. Yeah, I think he is. Uh, and and occasionally, I like to watch CNBC, and then they, they have a good app on, on, on uh, Roku. I saw about three years ago that it is, again, once again, the porn industry, which pushed internet technology, they're trying to make a, a sex partners. Oh, wow. And so yeah. they're pushing this technology hard, and it, it, it looks horrible. It looks like mannequin, stiff-like uh, conversation. <laughs> <laughs> it's, yeah, yeah. It's not there yet. Not not quite. That's a fascinating one because, yeah, there's a lot of predictions, and that's when we're, we're just There's a lot of literature on, you know, on whether on whether having a human partner or having an AI partner is better. Uh, it's I'll, I'll leave it to the young generations to deal yeah. with that. <laughs> the economy. Predictions are that the worldwide economy has grown and has continued to grow, and there has not been global economic collapse. Uh, not quite. Uh, even in, in 2008, we had a huge, scary recession from December 2007 to about June 2009. That was a terrifying so if, moment. So if the planetary bodies had done the policy of the Great Depression, uh, as opposed to lip freeing money, mm-hmm. uh, we could have been in a Great Depression too. That would have been far more significant. Luckily, we made the right policy calls. We still had the Great Recession, yes, uh, planet wide. Uh, so that's hard. Yes, that's yeah. a hard prediction. So now we're in the realm of how do you know the economy is going to be gangbusters, you know, forever and ever because technology keeps getting better and better, and then productivity gets better and better. Yeah, that's a, that's a fascinating. Wow. And yeah. then, of course, there's COVID, right? One philosophical philosophical okay. question you may ask is what? Um, oh gosh, what's what's the term I'm looking for? Um, w- w- when you have a flaw in your thinking, something like a straw man or you know uh, any sort of error, what 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 is the error about um, thinking that our economy will always be growing? You know what I mean? Like like. It's optimism from uh, it's, it's it's technological op- optimism. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, yeah. And, 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 and lastly, lifespan. Mm-hmm. Ray Kurzweil predicted that in 2019, two years yes. ago, the average human life expectancy uh, would be 100. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. And so we, we, we have some statistics here of where the life expectancy was in 2010. For, yeah. It for was, males. Yeah. For males, what was it? 74 years. And females, 79. Yes. Okay, so let's uh, predict it in 21. If you're born in 21, now males have a predicted life expectancy of 76 and females of... 81. 81. So yep. a little bit shy of 100? Mm, yeah, by yeah. like 20 years? <laughs> yeah, 20 years shy. <laughs> Roughly. Only a fifth of someone's life. Yeah. Yeah. And so that is really hard prediction. Yes. I hear a lot of literature on, on life extension clini- is finally going to clinical trials. Mm-hmm. Okay, clinical trials to the clinic, it can be 10 to 15 years. Yeah. And then these are might be small benefits. They mm-hmm. might add two or three years, if, especially if you start on them when you're young. Yes. Uh, and so we're beginning that. Mm-hmm. And so I, I, I guess that's where that, op- you know, now we're in that nature, and then we're going we're gonna to conclude the episode. We're in that nature of what's hard, what's easy. Let me, let me remind you, uh, the audience, what, what we mean by that. Mm-hmm. Lunar and Martian bases or the end of aging, which comes first? What do you think? Oh, my goodness. Okay. Uh, you know, I and it's funny because I kind of feel like, you know, as far as I've gone in terms of skeptical thinking, I don't want to answer that question because I know it's impossible to answer, you know? I think we get to Mars first. Okay. Okay. There you go. Lunar and Martian bases or AI that surpasses humanity? I think that's a tough question. Okay. So, yeah. And, and, and again, because the question is when you AI that surpasses, that surpasses humanity at what? At everything? At everything. Okay. So that, that's a great question. AI that surpasses humanity at playing chess. That was done years ago. Yeah. Okay. Okay. It's a great question. It's a great question. So I'd, I, I'm going to go with lunar landing. 
Lunar bases. Yeah. Lunar bases, maybe, but if lunar bases are 20 years away, might we have the super AI in 20 years? We might. Yeah. yeah. It's a tough call. It is a very tough call. I, I, I'll lean with lunar bases, but I but you okay. don't know. Yeah. Uh, how about a cure for Alzheimer's or a cure for a glioblastoma multiform brain cancer, which is a tough cancer. I We've know. made no progress on it so far. So far. Yeah, I. but, you know, it's funny because... Ditto you know, Alzheimer's. We've made essentially no progress. Yeah. Which one comes yeah. first? Oh, goodness. Yeah, the great question. I have no idea. <laughs> so predicting I, the future, you know, certain aspects of it are really easy. And, and, and certain aspects are unpredictable. Economies, end of aging, mm -hmm. uh, uploading, who knows? Yes. Yeah. Will we, be, will we have driverless cars by 2030? Probably. Yes. Will we have moon bases by 2040? Probably. Mm-hmm. Will we be uploaded by 2040? I can't tell you. Yeah, yeah. So, that, that, so we'll, let's, let's go ahead and, and wrap that up with, with uh, please give us your feedback. And, and yeah, you know. What are some of your, yeah, I'd actually, I'd be very, very curious for our listeners in our comment section, or if you want to send us an email at touringrabbitholespodcast at gmail.com, what are your predictions for the next 20 years, 100 years, or just any time in the future? Uh, you know, and uh, I, yeah, We'd I be guess. happy to address some of them. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So yeah, that, I mean, the fact that this is an actual legitimate business, you can be, you know, work, work as a futurism consultant if you've got the credibility, if you can convince somebody that that you know what you're talking about with, with some degree of, of, of confidence, it's an actual job. So yeah, let us know what you think in the comment section. Also, uh, I want to mention before we end this episode, this podcast is available wherever podcasts are played. Not only YouTube, you can find us on Google Podcasts, you can find us on anchor.fm, just go anchor.fm slash touring rabbit holes. And yeah, you can listen to us uh, in the car. So not only on YouTube, but also the audio only. Roger that. Okay. All right. Until next week, I've been Gabriel Hesch and Dr. Alex Alanis. And we'll see you next time. Have a great week. Cool.